Come on, kids. Let Family Home Entertainment take you to the place everyone wants to be. Can't wait to get to Mapletown. My favorite place to be, Mapletown and me. It's Mapletown, a colorful land where bears wear badges, bunnies wear beads, and someone took the candy. Who was it that took the fine wrapped candies from our store? Hey, I really don't know who did it, Mom. Join Patty Rabbit, Bobby Bear, Fanny Fox, and the furry friends of Mapletown in solving this super sweet mystery. Tell me who besides you would steal them, then. I'm innocent. Mapletown is the program more and more parents are choosing to brighten and enlighten their preschoolers' day. So hop aboard the Mapletown train to the place little kids adore. Watch out for Mapletown, the case of the missing candy, coming your way on video cassette from Family Home Entertainment. Mapletown and me. From Fairbank, the bear capital of the world, it's time for Bear Witness News. It's time for a bear's eye view of the universe with the Bear Witness News Team. Starring our investigative reporter, the bear who covers a story by becoming a part of it, that bear beyond compare, Ted E. Bear. Hello, everybody. And featuring at the anchor desk, our famous anchor bear, Patty. That's Patty Bear on the air. Thank you. With our science and weather expert, Dr. Werner Von Bear. Yeah, that's myself. Our sports announcer, Riz Bear. Let's play ball. And with our bears behind the scenes, our director, Melvin. Places, please. Let's go. Let's go. Our camera bear, Fast Focus Freddy. Is it time to hibernate? Yeah. And our timely veteran bear who keeps us on the air, NG Bear. I'm kind of new at that. But I think I have enough time to learn it. How much time do we have? Bear Witness Views will return after these messages. Welcome to Bear Witness News. Today we're going to talk about learning. You know, learning is not something that stops when you finish school. It goes on for your whole life. Learning really means fun, excitement, and adventure. To illustrate that point, here's our investigative reporter, Ted E. Bear, with today's Creature Feature. Thank you, Patty. Uh, I'm, I'm sure all the kids out there are attending school, but, but have you ever been to a school where the students are soaking wet? The other day, I flew the Bear Witness News blimp to, to California in the United States uh, to a place called SeaWorld. Uh, this is a school where people teach animals, and animals teach people. Uh, I had a talk with a teacher at one of the park's most popular attractions, the Spooky Kooky Castle Seal and Otter Show. This is Al Garver. Hi, Teddy. Where's your student? His name is Clyde, and he's a California sea lion. During the fall months, Clyde has an opportunity to learn new behaviors for next summer's crowd. Wow. Sea lions learn to do these tricks or behaviors because they are motivated by a reward. A and what's the reward? A snack, a delicious little fish. Do you think Clyde likes to learn? Well, why don't you go ahead and ask him? Sure, okay. Clyde, do you like to learn? That, that was very nicely said. Well, now back to you, Patty. He certainly has a lot on his mind. What exactly did Clyde say, Ted? Uh, he said learning is easy for him because it's fun. Uh, for Clyde, learning and playing are the same thing. Well, that's how everyone should think about learning, wouldn't you say, Patty? I agree. You're so smart, Ted E. Uh, thank you, Ted, for that fascinating creature feature. Why am I upside down? Fast focus, Freddy. Oh, me. Thank you. Please don't play with the camera. It's distracting. Don't blame me. I didn't do anything. Yeah, fast focus Freddy never does anything. 
Hmm, this is really a mystery. Well, we'd better solve it quickly. We've got a show to put on. Well, let me look backstage. It's now time for the Bearific Scientific Report with our Bear Witness News science reporter, the head of Grizzly University's Department of Probabilities, Dr. Werner von Baer. Today, for my Bearific Scientific Report, I'm going to show you a monster movie. It's not what you think. Look, a pterodactyl. Millions of years ago, these strange dinosaurs flew over the Earth. But this bird wasn't really made when the dinosaurs were alive. This flying dinosaur was made for the Smithsonian Aerospace Museum in Washington, D.C., USA. It is controlled by a radio. We're not talking about a midget monster here. Space scientists and aeroplane engineers designed this 36-foot little monster. That's 11 meters. It was not easy, and no one ever saw a real pterodactyl fly. Did it flap its wings like a duck, quack, quack, or did it soar like an eagle? They decided to make it do a little bit of both. The engineers here took it out to the desert. There was suspense and anticipation, and up it soared into the wild blue yonder. It was a real success. What do you think of that? Back to you, Paddy. Paddy, are you there? Speak to me. I'm here, Werner. What happened to the lights? Don't worry, Patty. Benji Bear is just having a little trouble adjusting to the fancy new control panel I installed. A little trouble? Look around you. No lights. Yeah. How are the people going to see the rest of our colorful show? And how am I supposed to give my weather report? What am I supposed to say? The weather tonight will be dark? There, you see. I gave Ben the operations manual. It'll take a little time, but he's learning. Yeah, but, but, but what if he blows another fuse? That's right. We have a very important visitor coming over. Yeah, the songwriter and musician Bob Snyder. If Ben G. Bear makes a mistake during our interview with Bob Snyder, well, it would just be unbearable. I'm sure Ben will do a good job. He'll do a great job, all right. Places, please. Let's go. Let's go. Right now, it's time for the inside story. That's when we go behind the scenes to take an in-depth look at a subject. What's the inside story today, Ted? Well, Patty, uh, recently I visited a school for professional stunt people. Uh, uh, that's where they teach people all those dangerous tricks we see in the movies and on television. Tricks that we should never, ever try to do ourselves. Uh, that's right, Patty. And here's Mr. Kohana, the teacher of the stunt school. Hi, Mr. Kahana. Hi, Daddy. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. This is quite a spot you got here. You train people to do stunts for the movies, That's huh? right. They do some stunts, let me tell you. Learning to fall without getting hurt is, is really important. That's because falling is used more than any other stunt. Some movies call for hundreds and hundreds of falls. It takes years of special training to learn how to fall like this, so never try any of this on your own. Here are some super high falls. Wow! You know, stunt people are very special. These are professional athletes who plan and time their tricks very precisely. I I'm sure you've seen cowboy shows where the, the guys go flying off their horses. Well. The secret is an invisible harness wrapped around the cowboy called the jerk. The jerk is attached to a long cord, so it pulls the stuntman backwards right out of his saddle. Boy, that cowboy sure bit the dust. But his special training gave him the ability to give a great performance w without hurting himself. And that's the inside story. Over to you, Patty. Uh, Patty? Yes. Over to you. Uh, is something wrong? I was just thinking, what if there are mistakes when Bob Snyder is here? Well, don't worry, there won't be any. Uh, I, I hope. 
But what if you can't teach an old bear new tricks? Come on, Patty. Have a little faith in your fellow bear. Oh, you're right. And we've got work to do. And now here's our weather and science expert bringing us weather from all over the world, Dr. Werner von Baer. It's time for Weather Watch. What kind of weather are we going to watch today, Professor? Well, Paddy, today we're going to look at a very dangerous weather condition, the hurricane. A hurricane is an enormous whirling storm that always begins over warm ocean water, like we see here. Bearbanks International Weather Service keeps a close watch on hurricanes. They examine pictures of the storm taken by weather satellites. That way, they can give us a storm warning. And if you ever hear a hurricane warning, take it very seriously, because a hurricane has winds that blow at nearly 130 miles per hour. That's 208 kilometers per hour. That wind can really bear down on you, enough to cause terrible waves and flooding. Once the hurricane moves over the land, it eventually dies down, and life can return to normal. Thank you, Werner von Baer, for that interesting weather watch report. You are welcome. Did you know that after a hurricane, you can sometimes see a beautiful rainbow filled with beautiful colors? Wait! I said a rainbow has the beautiful colors. Not me. I'm a bear. Not a peacock. <laughs> Thank you, Werner. That was a colorful story. Too colorful. All right, stop the show. What is it, Patty Bear? We've got to do something about this right away before it's too late. Before Bob Snyder gets here and it ruins everything. But what should we do? What else can we do? Ben works the camera, and I work the control panel. Don't be ridiculous. Ben will be like Old Faithful sooner than you can say, please bear with us. Oh. Maybe we can postpone the show a little bit. Just three months. Long enough for a quick hibernation. Postpone? No! Absolutely not. Just waiting for Ben to make another mistake is turning me into a nervous wreck. Okay, then. Okay, then. Let's clear out of here. Let's run over to the Baratiri and cool out over a couple of milkshakes. Like Bear witness views. Wait! What are you doing? We shouldn't run away from this problem, or, or any problem for that matter. Why not? Because running away never solved anything. Don't you remember the time all the bears panicked and started to leave Bear Bank because they had a problem they were afraid of? Remember the invasion from nearby Monster Mountain? Oh, yeah. I surely do remember that day. Well, I remember it, too. All the bears decided to flee from Bear Bank because they were afraid of the monsters up in Monster Mountain. But, but I was selected to drive up and have a look. Later on, they decided to have a pep rally in honor of their leader, Count Dracula. I had figured out that the only way to stop them is to not be afraid of them. If you're not afraid, you can conquer all your problems. I am Count Dracula, the most frightening of all monsters. Yeah, but, but you know, you, you're, you're, not, you're not frightening. You're not frightening either. <laughs> the part of you that's real isn't frightening. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And the part of you that isn't real is in my mind. And it's only as scary as I make it. So I went on TV to tell the other bears. So let's not run away. Let's continue with Bear Witness News. Uh, everyone take your places. All right, all right. Everyone take your places. The show must go on. I'll go backstage and work with Benji Bear. Yeah, I think he needs somebody to bear down on him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Our investigative reporter, Ted E. Bear, is ready to bring us another field report. It's a feature we call Nature Watch. Ted, I thought you were going to report on schoolhouses. Bear with me, Patty. I am. 
And this is a, a very special kind of schoolhouse. It's a um, kind of a flying school. See, look, look, it's up in this tree. See there? Uh, a mama bird is about to teach her little baby bird to fly. Birds twitch their wings many times before they fly. See? That, that helps them develop their flying muscles. Did you know that some birds fly over a hundred yards on their very first flight? Well, that's an entire football field. I think he's ready for recess. But he's learning, Patty. A schoolhouse doesn't have to be made of desks and chalkboards, and school doesn't have to end in the afternoon. A class is anywhere that people or animals learn about life. That's a tough school. It sure is, Patty. And now, Bear Witness News brings you an exciting update on the world of sports. Bear Witness News sports expert Grizz Bear is standing by with another sort sports report. Uh, uh, sports sorts reports. Um, uh, a short sports report. Whew. Right. T take it away, Grizz. I'm at one of the world's most famous sports stadiums, Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. And my report is the sad state of baseball. The fans have deserted the game. I don't see anybody, man, woman, or bear. To make matters worse, not even the players have shown up. Here's Dodger manager Tommy Lasorda. Tommy, come on over here. Tommy is one of the best and most colorful in the business. Tommy, how do you explain this pathetic lack of interest among baseball devotees? Easy, Grizz. We're not playing today. Grizz must be embarrassed. It's not that unbearable, Grizz. That's right, Patty. Next, we have... Attention, everyone. Your attention, please. Bob Snyder is on the way. His limousine was last seen driving down Bear Bank Boulevard. We're all set, Melvin. But what if Benji Bear makes Bob Snyder flip over or, or turns him red and blue and green like a rainbow? Oh, don't worry about Ben. You do your job, and he'll do his. Update, Bob Snyder is entering the studio. Now, viewers, you're in for a special treat. Today in our celebrity circle, we are proud to welcome Bob Snyder. Take it away, Ted, in the celebrity circle. Hello, Bob, and welcome to Bear Witness News. Hi, Ted. It's a pleasure to be here. Bob, you've been called the world's ambassador to kids. Uh, as an internationally acclaimed songwriter and musician, uh, tell me how you began your career. Well, Ted, basically I began working and writing in the pop music field. Actually, I'm a self-taught musician. But about nine years ago, I started working with kids in the school systems in Toronto, Canada, where I live. Well, that's fantastic. How did you teach yourself to play guitar? I started, you know, picking up the guitar and started to play it. I got some guitar books, learned some guitar chords, and then I would listen to my favorite rock bands and records and just play along. Bob, tell me about your interest in children's music. Well, I feel really, really blessed, Ted, to have found this special communication through my music with the kids. And actually, my music is not just for the kids, it's for everybody. Uh, at my shows, I like to call them family concerts, you see, because there's grandparents and then there's the parents but most of all, kids. Speaking of kids, uh, tell me about the Rainbow Kids. I'm glad you asked about them, because I just love the Rainbow Kids. See, wherever I perform and I travel throughout the world doing concerts, I usually work with local kids in each city who perform with me. And I work with them the day before the show. I rehearse with them about an hour, an hour and a half. And the next day, they're stars on stage with me, and they're the Rainbow Kids. And you know what? I bet there's some of your viewers watching this right now who maybe someday could be a rainbow kid. Did you ever think about having a rainbow bear? Rainbow bear? Never thought of that. It has a nice ring. I bet you know some nifty tunes, huh, Ted? You mean like that, that Bruce Bearstein tune? Bear in the USA. <laughs> hey, why don't we take a look at one of your music videos right now? We'll see Listen to the Water. the water side. 
one man who can end this song and that's Captain John Sheard over there. Rolling down the river side. Ah! Hey, hey. Bob, I really liked that. How, how did you create Listen to the Water? Well, that was the very first song that I made up with young people. I was on a field trip with some kids in a park near Toronto, and we were passing a flowing stream of water, and the melody just came to me. I just started singing it. I listened to what the kids say, see anything they say is just fine with me, and I uh, incorporate their ideas into the songs. My job really is really just to unlock the joy, and, and most of all, to make sure the kids feel good about who they are and what they're doing. And when I do that, nice things happen. Bob, you're very talented, even if you're not a bear. <laughs> Thank you for visiting Bear Witness News. Well, it's just been great being here with you, Ted. And if I ever come around here back to Bear Bank, I promise I'm going to stop in and say hi. Bear Witness News will be right back after these messages. OK, everyone, we're back on the air. Back on the air. Well, we hope you all learned something today, because we sure did. How about you, Bob? I sure did. You're a great bunch of people to work with. Oh. Oops. I mean bears. <laughs> <laughs> and I learned something, too. Oops. <laughs> you sure did, Benji Bear. Well, from all of us at Bear Bank to all the viewers around the world, until next time, this has been Bear Witness News. Hello there. You have caught me after hours at HOMY TV. We have made it through another broadcast of Bear Witness News. In spite of a few technical difficulties, the studio lights on the Bear Witness News set are off for the night, and I am officially off duty. You know, with the pressures and responsibilities of our jobs on Bear Witness News, it is important for all of us to find time to have some fun and relaxation when we're off the air. One of the ways we do that is through our local theater group called the Bear Bank Village Players. All of the staff are members of this group. All of us, that is, except my friend Ted E. Bear. Ted never seems to stop for a break. His assignments generally make him run off after each broadcast ends so that he'll be prepared to bring you more interesting and informative experiences the next time we're on the air. The principal of the Bear Bank Public School has asked our theater group to present some fairy tales to the students next week. When we broadcast the news, it is so important for us to stick to the facts and be responsible reporters. Would it ever be fun to use our imagination in presenting these fairy tales? But to give the students an entirely different approach to those longtime favorite stories. Maybe we could do a parody. Do you know what a parody is? A parody is an imitation, in a humorous and outrageous style, of a serious story. Everything is exaggerated or beyond truth and reason, to make the story something to laugh about. Maybe we could even get Ted involved in this one. He loves kids and is the president of the Cub Board for the Bureau of Bear Affairs. In that job, he watches over all of the school-age bears in Bear Bank to make sure they are happy and learning their lessons. We could make Ted an investigative reporter and act as if he is covering an assignment for Bear Witness News discovering what is really taking place in those fairy tale stories. I wonder how we would present Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Why, I could be a princess with a charming prince and we could... 
Patty, we have an exciting Bear Witness News docudrama. Our Ted E. Bear players will recreate one of the most gripping stories in Bear Banks history. <laughs> the story of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> hold it, Ted. Hold it. There's what, what, only what? one. We could only find one dwarf. What? One, Ted. One? And now, Snow White and the Dwarf. Patty, you play Snow White. She's the most beautiful girl in the kingdom. Wow. What do I wear? That cute little pink yeah. number up there. I got it at great expense, I'd like you to know. And, uh, Vernie, you play the evil queen. Why does I always have to be the evil queen? Easy. You can't be the dwarf. Oh, oh yeah. Dwarves is small. That's right. Now, Grizz, you're the dwarf. Him? And I'll be the PC. What a PC? Prince Charming. I've already got the hat on, and the part suits me right down to the ground. Behind one of the great romances in history lay an underhanded scheme hatched by an evil and jealous queen. Evil is my name, and monarchy is my game. I'll tell you the reason for her anger and resentment. See, the bears had chosen Snow White as Miss America. For sure, you know, but like it's mostly an honorary title, you know. Mm. This will put her to sleep for a hundred years. <laughs> hey, Snow, I'm going down for a bucket of burgers. You look out for yourself, okay? I heard on the news there's some kind of weirdo in the neighborhood. Some kind of evil queen. For sure, like, uh, don't worry. I'll be at the gym all day. Knock, 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 knock. Monarchy calling. <laughs> oh, like, wow. I didn't hear you. I mean, awesome, like. Would you like a nice red apple, my dear? Health food, yeah. for sure. Oh, wow, Natch, you well, know. There you are. It's mm, delicious. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Evil, 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 evil. Mmm. <laughs> Mmm, yuck. Gross. I mean, this must be full of preservatives. Mm. I don't like preservatives, mm. you know. A, a person oh. could get sick. Yeah. <sighs> uh -huh. Sure enough, the Wicked Witch's evil scheme worked. Snow White ate the toxic apple filled with unhealthy preservatives and fell asleep. <laughs> Aha! It's Snow and Jesus Leap. A toxic apple filled with preservatives. This must be the work of the evil queen. So the dwarves saw that Snow White was a victim of the Wicked Witch's evil scheme. He could see that without outside help, she was in for a very long sleep. Hey, Slick! You call me, Shorty? Yeah, are you a Prince Charming? Well, does the bear walk in the woods or what? Well, the, the wicked queen fed Snow White here a toxic apple, and I thought maybe if you gave her a kiss, you might be able to wake her up, you know? Hey, what do you think I am? Some kind of toxic waste cleanup committee? Well, you know how many toads I've kissed today? Hey, a babe in the woods. Sure beats toads. <laughs> Hiya, beautiful. I'm your charming Prince Charming. What do you think? Ooh, like, I smell toad lips. <coughs> oh, please, please marry me. Make me the happiest bear in the woods. Oh. oh, gross. Wash your face before you kiss me. Oh, gross. Oh. Promise you'll never kiss another toad. Oh, so and, beautiful. like, no more artificial preservatives. And another thing, uh, where anything. did you get that Prince Charming suit? It's the least. I'll like, get rid of wow, it. Wow, I can't believe it. And and and, and another thing, that maid, uh -huh. she doesn't do windows. She never meant anything no. to me. No, and I want to go to Puerto Rico. Sure, sure. Tomorrow. Okay. Today. 
Hey, you're on. And that's our Bear Witness News investigative report on the startling behind-the-scenes story of how Snow White met Prince Charming and became a real princess. Oh, my prince. Oh. Oh. Darn squirrels. That's worse than toad lips. Sometimes those animals are unbearable. The squirrels leave their acorns everywhere, and they're always chattering while we're on the air. Maybe we should build them their own house, deep in the woods, made out of nothing but acorns. That might keep them out of our hair for a while. Now, if it were my house, I'd build it out of something tastier, like a honeycomb or a, a gingerbread. Isn't there a fairy tale about a gingerbread house with a, oh, a wicked witch? I just imagine what a great news report that would make. I think it was um, Hansel and Gretel. Okay, gang, we're gonna do the HNG story. Riz, you'll play the woodchopper. <laughs> I will play any part as long as I don't have to be the wicked witch. Good, Bernie. You're the wicked witch. <laughs> Patty, you'll be Gretel. Why would anybody name a girl Gretel? I don't know. And I'll play the handsome and charming Hansel. <sighs> We're ready! The tragic events begin on June 33rd when Hansel and Gretel walked into the woods near their suburban home. So they wouldn't get lost, Hansel, he left a trail of bread slices. Bread slices? Sure. I knew a guy that did this in New Jersey once, and it really worked. Yeah. <laughs> but unknown to the pair, somebody stole the bread. Wow. Look, Gretel. It's so cute. It was then that they spotted a strange and wonderful house in the forest. Ooh. Aluminum? Gingerbread. Hmm. Builders will cut costs wherever they can these days. Oh! Ah! Oh! Got you! Who are you? I am the most evil and wicked bitch you'll ever meet. It's my card. Evil? Yeah, I'm also the last wicked bitch you'll ever meet. Bear Witness News has learned that a key figure who changed the course of history was an obscure woodchopper. He had been clearing the land for a new subdivision nearby. <laughs> hey, I said a woodchopper was working, not eating. I said working in the forest. Oh, that's my cue. Wow. I am a mighty woodchopper. Here is my card. I'm into forest products. Plywood, pulp, and toothpicks. Hey, smells like somebody's stirring up gingerbread. Too early for the lunch truck. Maybe I'd better look into this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me see here. Uh, ah, shaken bill. Yeah. Nine. Do uh, ah, yeah, sauce bear <laughs> Nine. Ah, yeah, this is good. Ginger bear. <laughs> you and your stupid bread slices. <laughs> Will you give me a break? We're going to be parquet flooring here. Okay. Come on, sweeties. In the go. Let's go. Hop in. Come on. Yeah. Come, come on. Don't be stubborn. Hey, what is this? Some kind of new fast food joint? Aha! Mm. Uh -huh. Two little bears in peril. This mm. is a job for woodchopper. Free woodchopper. Free woodchopper? Yeah. Well, I thought it'd sound a little more dramatic. You know, like uh, Miami Vice. Hands over your hat. Up against the oven. Don't move. Bear Witness News was the first to break this story, resulting in a crackdown by the Federal Bureau of Digestion. You got the right to remain silent and the right to an attorney. <laughs> Pretty messy. What kind of a breadhead would leave bread slices in the stupid forest? Yeah. I didn't write this, turkey. Oh, 
Okay, that's a wrap. Let's go, let's go. As a result of our Bear Witness News expose, there are no fast food gingerbread houses today. If gingerbread is made today, it's made the old-fashioned way. They burn it. Now, isn't that better than a bunch of dumb old acorns? Well, I hope you enjoyed our little trip into the world of imagination, in spite of the scary witches. I wonder if the principal would allow us to do something like that. Sometimes it's nice to let your imagination go and see where it'll lead you. Maybe you could be a prince or a princess, or uh, perhaps you will discover some <laughs> uh, interesting friends along the way. So, from Professor Von Baer, Melvin, Grizz, Ted E. Bear, myself, and the rest of the Bear Witness News team, so long for now from Bear Bank, the bear capital of the world. And don't forget that funny word, parody. That means funny. Yeah.